Let us uh, go to Mark Regev, who's an advisor to the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who's giving a news conference in Tel Aviv. Uh, let's hear what he's got to say. South, it was it was easier. It was more general. But now that fighting is moving to the south, we have specified specific designated areas for people to flee to. Uh, uh, areas uh, that are defined. Uh, the international community knows these areas and these areas are safer areas. Now, we've not asked the whole population of the South to relocate. We've not even asked the whole population of Khan Yunus to relocate. But those neighborhoods, those areas, those specific areas where we know there is going to be heavy combat, we've asked people there to relocate, and we have, as I say, designated specific areas. And we've shared uh, these areas with the international uh, community, with the UN, with other humanitarian organizations, because we, we urge that in those temporary safer zones, that there be a maximum effort to supply uh, to the people who have relocated there with uh, 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 food, with shelter, with medicine, with uh, uh, field hospitals and so forth. Yeah, we know uh, for people to relocate is never easy, but it's surely uh, preferable to, uh, to uh, uh, being caught in the crossfire to being caught up in a, a violent war zone. Thank you. A question from Paul Adams from the BBC. Could Ambassador Regev address the reports that Israel is seeking to create a buffer zone in the Gaza Strip? The United States has said it opposes any changes to the size of the Gaza Strip. Is a buffer zone being considered, and would this be a temporary or permanent measure? So if Israel has said publicly, we have no intention to occupy the Gaza Strip. We don't want to rule the Gaza Strip. We just want to see the end of Hamas uh, rule in Gaza, the destruction of its military machine, uh, and a new reality in Gaza where the uh, is Israeli civilians will no longer have to feel the constant threat of Hamas terrorists in Gaza threatening them, of terrorists crossing the frontier in the middle of the night and attempting to butcher their, their children. I would remind you all that it is Hamas that has said that they would commit the October 7th massacre again and again and again, their words, not mine. Given the capability, given the opportunity, Hamas would once again butcher our children, behead, burn families alive, machine gun and massacre uh, the young people attending the open air uh, music festival. This is Hamas. And if they say so publicly, we take them on this level, we take them at their word. They can never again be allowed to attack and kill Israelis. And ultimately, removing Hamas from power, uh, uh, creating a new reality in the Gaza Strip is not only in Israel's interests, but it's in the interests of the Palestinians of Gaza as well, because what has Gaza bought Gazans? What has Hamas bought Gazans in the 16 years it's been ruling the Gaza Strip? What have they, what have they uh, uh, given the people of Gaza through their authoritarian rule? Bloodshed, misery, Pain, suffering, poverty, surely the people of Gaza deserve better than this current extremist terrorist cult that runs their, uh, runs their uh, uh, lives. Did I answer the question? I think you did. Uh, we have another question here from the Korea News Agency. We saw reports that humanitarian trucks could not go through the Gaza crossing yesterday. Is Israel blocking the entry or is it Egypt? So our goal now that the military operation has resumed, is to pursue uh, Hamas vigorously. We will destroy Hamas's military machine, and we will end their control over the Gaza Strip. At the same time, we will, in parallel, make a maximum effort to do two things. One, to differentiate between the terrorists who are our bitter enemy and the civilian population who are not the target of our operation. We will do everything to safeguard that civilian popu population. And as well, we will facilitate the entrance into the Gaza Strip of humanitarian support for the civilians of Gaza. So as we move in now to, to crush Hamas, we will in parallel continue to, to facilitate uh, humanitarian support for the people of Gaza. Um, uh, that is part of our credo, that is part of our strategic goal. Once again, we will do everything we can to keep uh, uh, Gaza and civilians outside of the crossfire between uh, the IDF and the terrorists, and we will do everything to facilitate that that population receives 
water, medicine, food, shelter. And we urge the international humanitarian organizations to be there on the ground, specifically in the designated safer areas where we expect lots of civilians to congregate for an interim period until the fighting is over. Uh, Ambassador Regev, I would like to repeat the question of Mr. Paul Adams from the BBC. Perhaps we didn't answer it fully. Um, there are reports that Israel is seeking to create a buffer zone in the Gaza Strip. The United States has said it opposes any change to the size of the Gaza Strip. Is this buffer zone being considered, and would this be a temporary or permanent measure? So we have spoken that in the framework of the post-conflict relationships, Israel will, has to, will have to have a security envelope. We can never, allow, uh, never again allow terrorists uh, to cross the border and butcher our people the way they did on October 7th. And we can't take our eye off the ball. And so in a post-conflict reality, a post-Hamas reality, Israel will maintain for the foreseeable future overall security control. That will be a necessary prerequisite of any post-Hamas reality. Now, if you ask me about a buffer zone, let me be clear. Uh, you won't have a situation in the future where you can have Hamas uh, terrorists on the border, directly on the border, positioned just to cross over and kill our people again. There will have to be security arrangements on the ground to prevent that from happening. That is not Israel taking territory from Gaza, on the contrary. That is creating security zones where you have a, a, a special uh, a, a situation on the ground which limits the ability of people to enter Israel to kill our people. It's common sense. The Israelis will never stand for a situation that they had until October 7th, where Hamas terrorists are directly on the border and can rush through and kill our people at will. That, that's, that's not a situation we're going to return to, and there will have to be security arrangements on the ground that prevent that from happening. Thank you. A question from Dr. Abby Korb. This week, Iran stated that Hamas has only used 10 percent of their arsenal. Do you have any comments on that? I don't, I don't want to go into specific numbers, but it's clear Hamas has not yet been defeated. It's clear that Hamas is still ro launching rockets against Israel. It's clear that Hamas still controls large parts of the Gaza Strip. And we have work ahead of us. And our goal is, once again, the destruction... Uh, there we go. That's uh, Mark Rego, for senior uh, advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, speaking on the uh, uh, second day of the renewed bombardment of Gaza after that seven-day truce ended. This is uh, Mossad, the uh, Israeli intelligence agency, uh, pulls out of uh, negotiations. So we'll continue to monitor uh, what he's saying in a few minutes. And do stay with us on Sky News. Uh, in a few moments, we will look ahead uh, to Boris Johnson's appearance this coming week before the COVID inquiry.